Right on the what stage. did they have now, Elmo? Oh, Elmo, we don't know. The guy uh, dropped out of sight. Wilkes is bringing it up on the bench. Okay? All right. Here it is. Time to go for us. Did you mention Owen Riley? Yeah, he's a new race driver. Mm -hmm. If you could uh, pull over right up here, I'd uh, jump out. Well, we can take you down to Mill Valley. You know, it's right on our way. Uh, Thanks, anyway. I'd like to take a walk. Hey, Mark.
What's that noise? Just uh, one of your ties. What if it sinks? Sinks? You don't have to worry about it sinking. It's already sunk. Excuse me, 
Tension in the upper body. No flow. Thanks for the free advice, Alma. You won't take it. Look, as far as I can see, I'm up here training my ass off while you're over there someplace drinking hot water with a bunch of barflies. Come on. Ellie wants to bite it so much. Who has to find my nuisance to tell me to butt out? But I gotta tell you this. You know, since Maya died, Flash has had it rough. He's been over in that junkyard of his getting ready for the revolution, and that's fine. But he's at the age now where he needs some family. And you're all you got. Flash is a big boy. He doesn't need me. Well, maybe you need him. Boys need their dads. You're breaking my heart. Now, I'm going to teach you everything there is to know about jealousy. And that's everything to know. I'm going to take your bloated carcass and teach you how to be a mountain racer. And you're going to go see Flash. Now, do I have a deal?
You son of a gun. How you doing, Flash? Damn, it's good to see you, son. God damn. What is it? It's a windmill. How about that lovely color? That's my favorite. What does it do? Oh, come on, son. You know the utility companies, every time you pay a bill, they send half the goddamn money to South America. They keep a bunch of fascist generals dumping on people's heads. They got the last Kopeck they're gonna get for me. What do you say we have a couple of beers? Come on up. Come on. Keep all the good stuff on the inside now, Wes. Otherwise, these pack of hoods will be walking off with them. How long has it been now, Wes? Ten, maybe twelve years, huh? Twenty. As you can see, I'm sleeping in your room now. I've been looking all over for a couple of beers. I thought I had a stash in them. No. Hey. How about a highball instead, eh? What's a highball? You know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and put it in the glass, swirl it up, and you got a highball. Hey, watch these out, will you? They're paper. I know the paper. You want a drink or not? Paper doesn't Oh, come on, Wes, for Christ's sake. Oh, oh, oh. Damn. You get my postcard? Are you kidding me? No, I sent you a postcard. Oh, come on. You I sent you a postcard. Really? You think you sent me a postcard? I know I sent you a postcard. Actually, I think you're right. You're goddamn well I'm right. Say that. Yeah, that's 1967. You remember what you said in the car? I probably wanted to know how you felt. Hey, Wes, are you still hyperventilating all over the goddamn place? What do you call that? That's my friend, my old timer. You know, for the last three years I've been trying to get this overfed canary to stand up and say, Workers of the world unite. I'll be goddamn, couldn't get him to say a squeak. But all of a sudden one day I take him out to the door and I say, take a look out here at your country. What do you think? He looked me square in the eye, and he says, Workers of the world, good night. Then he crapped on my arm. Now that's gratitude for you, huh? Hey, Wes. I want you out here. The sun's almost up. Now, there are three things about this yellow sea. There's philosophy, strategy, and training. Any one without the other two is worthless. You've got to be an artist to take on this mountain. You're throwing yourself out halfway up. You understand that? It's great. You get to the summit, it's great. Then right in front of you is the cardio. Go! You don't have to do it all the way up. You can run if you want to, you know. Now, for the uphill, you need upper body strength. The legs are the wheels. The trunk, that's the engine. The arms, they're pistons, and they convey the power upwards. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, see, the arms, they're like pumps, see? And they literally pump you up the hill. What about the downhill? Well, this is where philosophy ends. This is pure religion. Come on. Now, shut up, and you'll learn something, huh? We used to have a guy come up here... His name was P. Pukowski. He's 40 years old. And I asked him, how do you run the downhill? He says, well, I just put my foot out. And once I put my foot out, I'm committed. See, I have to find a place to land. It's just like falling. The last possible moment, you catch on to something. Now, that's fate. It's crazy. But that's how you run the downhill, see. 
Anybody ever get hurt on this stuff? There's only one injury we'd ever had in the cataract. I know. Death. You got it. Get the knees up. Oh, I can't find it. Find what? Oh, Zach Demi's. He had his favorite shortcut around here somewhere. Mark it with wooden arrows. Unless you'd hang back and you think you got him wasted and then he'd sneak up the hill. That's not illegal, you know. It's yellow sea rules. Just say that you have to get to the ocean from Mill Valley by way of the summit. And that's all it says. So the race can go to the smartest, you know. May 30 and 40 seconds. 40 seconds? Now, when you get to suicide, and there's a fork there, and you go left. That means I'm going out of my way. I'm on an extra hundred yards. Yeah, well, but you're saving your quads. You make up the time and space when you go for the summit. Look who's here. Oh, no, Ellie. What a doc here. Boy, race director. Where? seen you since the 64 Olympic trials. Sorry about what happened to you there. Well, anyway, Elmo, uh, I wanted to remind you about those old Cielo Sea record books. Damn, I forgot. You know, I, I'd get them to you as soon as I can. I'd like to come over and pick them up myself. That's fine with me. Well, time's wasting. You, uh, making a little comeback, Wes? Not so you'd notice, huh? Oh, well, everybody's jogging these days. Quite a little fad. Ticket receipts were stolen out of my room. Look, Elmo. Thanks for the advice. But it's late, and I gotta get in some miles. Wes, I don't give advice. You want me to be your coach, you do what I say. It's as simple as that. I told you I appreciated what you said to me today. But I don't need talk. I need training. And I've been standing here listening to you all day. Well, I'm going to listen to this.
May the revolutions of this red windmill echo around the world. Cadillac. Beautiful goddamn piece of machinery, isn't it, huh? Anybody got a 1949 Cadillac? Huh? Of course not. Goddamn country of ours. They build so many different things that nothing fits in anything anymore. Then they keep on gripping up the forests, tearing up the countryside. Now they're even poisoning in the ocean. It's been a long goddamn way from Bloody Thursday, I'll tell you that much. Ever tell you about Bloody Thursday, Wes? It's really on tonight, isn't it? <laughs> what the hell do you mean by that? God damn, I wish your mother was here. That woman understood what the hell was going on. Not only did she understand what was going on, she took part in it with me. Look at my son here, all the goddamn running he was doing, huh? What'd I get him? A hippie hopping all over the goddamn country like a jackrabbit, jogging your ass off. While the country's going to the dogs. Nobody's doing anything. Even if you weren't so hot. Even if you weren't a good runner, where the hell are they going to get you in the end, huh? Maybe you're right, Flash. But who was it that used to say to me, be like rock? Huh? Be like this. Be like a U-joint. And stick with it. And work hard for the goal. For you, it was for the brotherhood of man. For me, it was for a worthless piece of cloth tape at a finish line. <laughs> bigger horse's ass than I even suspected. I don't care. Sports is the biggest goddamn energy drain in this country. Oh, bullshit. There's politics in sports. Good politics and bad politics. Just like the labor movement and every other goddamn movement. You know that West threw away his chance to run in the Olympics? because he had the balls to stand up and face the whole damn sports establishment and let them know that the rich set up amateurism so the poor couldn't play. Yeah, he took a few payments under the table. Everybody so. took it. So he started to organize, and so they canned him. And who the hell taught him that? 
You asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. <laughs> you know what's eating that kid? It's painful. It's so simple. You're his father. And you never once, from high school on up, saw that kid run, huh? You just didn't give a damn about what he did. We get those new suckers in. Yeah, they came in this morning. I checked them in. They're in the back. Oh, good. Well, hello, Wes. So you've uh, decided to run after all. You did get that uh, suspension cleared up, didn't you, Wes? No, I didn't. Oh. Well. In that case, there's nothing we can do for you. Sorry, yeah. Uh, but you understand our position. You're under suspension, and we'd be breaking AAC rules if we let you in. What do you got against me? Against you? Yeah. What are you talking about? You're the one that took the airline tickets to the AAC, aren't you? No. Wes, that is a very serious accusation, and I assure you, I don't Come need to stand on. here and... You turned me in, didn't you? You turned yourself in. Now, the system works for the man who just pulls his oar and keeps his mouth shut. Well, then it's a system for slaves and informers. Wes, we all took payments. But you weren't satisfied with the money. You wanted to tell the truth. And you had to be stopped. I'll be damned. Well, it's nothing personal, Wes. I just am not willing to risk the whole setup for you. You paying anybody? Well, if I did, it would be someone with a name, someone who would help the race. So much for amateurism. That's my entry blank. That's my entry fee. I'm going to be there on race day. I'm going to run in my age group. And I don't want you messing with me. Jerk off. Either you get that suspension cleared up, Wes, or you're not running in this race. steps in under 13 and then still get up to dynamite in under 20.
even if you weren't so hot. Even if you weren't a good runner. Where the hell is going to get you in the end, huh? <laughs> Is he running handicap? 
Mm-hmm. You only got four minutes on him. How much? I beat him even up. Once. When he was a kid and you were in your prime. See, you got mileage there. Time, interval. Oh, you got to know the facts, all right. But it's not enough just to be a scientist. You know something, Wes? I think maybe now I can make an artist out of you. Come on, I want to show you something. That's one of Zach Carroll's. See, nobody knew there was a way up here, but old Zach found it. He put it on the other side of the tree so the runners couldn't spot it. All right, that's a foxy guy. Three, four, five, six, seven. 307. That's less time than I thought we were going to get. Now, we didn't get the time that we wanted, but I showed you something. Go. I showed you something. And it'll help. Now, you wound up a little tight, but you got a base. Now, I'm going to ask you one more thing, and then you're going to do one more thing for me. 8-2. Hey, Go ahead. Now, I want you to go out and feel the course. You burn the uphill and saw the downhill. But when you burn, you say saw. And when you saw, you say burn. Then uh, taper off next week. Then you'll be ready. Place in the lose. You were tough on her, Flash. It's 
the conditions that were tough. The battles were tough. We had no space, no money. God damn it. We end up fighting each other. Was it worth it? I ever tell you the story of Bloody Thursday? Goddamn lie, I probably told you 57 times already. Tell me the story, Flash. You know, you may forgot this, but your mother was in on picket lines with us, too. Boy, I remember that day when them scabs come charging through that line. She'd grab one of them, bit into his thumb. That son of a bitch went flat on his ass, pleading for mercy. So whenever you start putting your old pop down and your mom, just remember one thing, son. Those struggles are in your blood, too. Good luck on Sunday, huh? According to local legends, the well, Indians called Mount Cam the Sleeping here. Maiden. 30. On this Sunday morning, the Maiden's about to be awakened by footsteps. Thousands of them, as runners of all ages, make their way 14.2 miles over Mount Tam to the Pacific Ocean. It starts in a junkyard at Richardson Bay and winds its way through the redwoods and ends in the quiet seaside town of Stinson Beach. For 73 years now, it has been the running of the Cielo Sea. Tyrant alive, get the chopper. Oh, you can't always see the world. Yeah. Check with VTR, make sure we got the opening bill. There's, there's the chopper. There's the chopper. Willie, can you hear me? How you doing? Okay. Ready up, uh, VTR 7. I need to close up the racers. The ringers have showed up for this race? Okay, yeah, Matt Singleton. We almost caught him with a smile on his face. He's a very intense guy. Does he like hills? Well, he's better if he's here today. <laughs> I'm Janine Yeomans at the start of the Cielo Sea race, 14.1 miles over the top of Mount Tamalpaya. A rough race, a race some people call the toughest in America. We're here with two of the top local entrants, Daryl Beard and Jenna Mervin. And Jenna, this is one of those rare races where a woman actually has a chance to win it. What about that? Well, I've been training very hard, and I'm just going to go like crazy to get up to cardiac, and then I'm just going to run as fast as I can. This is Gary Bjorkman. Is he here? Uh, Gary Bjorkman, late entry. Okay, well, that's two ex-Olympians. Riley must be putting some money into this thing. I, I don't know this guy. Here. All right, this fellow is Ray Lopes. He went to Mount Tam High School. He went on to Stanford, where he's an All-American. He knows the course, so I guess we should keep it on. Yeah. Walker, you're 75 years old. How long are you going to keep up this crazy running business? Oh, shit, I don't know. I don't like to make a principle. You know, but most of women, they figure that when you get 75, you got Irish arthritis. You have to stiff the smell of junk in step one. And they sort of don't pay too much attention. Uh, one special point this year, uh, because of the uh, head and trail and the large number of entries, no unregistered runners will be allowed on the course this year. The race stewards have been instructed to escort any runners. Stand by now in the studio, ready to face your audio. First round of two. Stand by Mike's mic. Here we go. One, tighten up. Hold one. Ready, two. Ready, two. Stand by. And take two. Cue mic. Go on. Cue mic. The oldest race in America is the legendary Boston Marathon. But the second oldest is the CLOC. First run in 1906. Good morning. I'm Mike Saray. With me today is Martin LaCorey. 
a former Olympian and great American mile. Marty, even though this is like a small town distance event, it is a very unique race. Well, it has an important difference. This is a handicap race. It could mean that the Walter Vitti of the world can compete with ex-Olympians, and that the young can compete against the old, and in fact, the women can compete against men on equal footing. Uh, the fellow who is helping to put us on the Masters here, two-time Olympian in the marathon, Matt Finkel. Marty, that's what you call a prototype of a marathon. Now, look at it from the waist down. It's like the Alex Ramos Cuba, the 880 man. The U.S. Olympian. Yeah. We have some runners we'd like you to see before the race begins. They won the family trophy the last three years. Today, they're both a threat in the race. Let's have a big hand for Cindy Payne and her mom. Good luck. Next, I want to introduce you to the Dean of that mountain. He's a man who's won this race three times and he's last year's champion. So let's have a cheer for Daryl Beard. Daryl Beard. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engine, please. Year A, please move into the starting ground up to the line now. That's men and women, 65 and over. Girls under 15 and boys under a 11. Long way to go. 14 miles. I want to wish all of you good luck. Come on, Cindy. Take your mark. Set. Here be on the line now. Men 55 to 64 and women 35 to 44. Mount Tam, where the vistas and the views are certainly splendid, but the focus of our attention today, of course, is on the CLOC run. We understand right now that Jenna Mervin has a good four-minute lead on Beard, who's the first man. The bronze. 
Get the bimbo out of the frame, blow her. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All in black, really moving up, but I, I can't identify him. He doesn't have a number. Hey, wait a minute, who is, wait a minute, that's who Janine was talking about. He's all dressed black, he's got uh, socks and shoes on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who this guy is. Any uh, speculation over? We're okay. Yeah, good. West well. Holman. West Holman. I think his name is West Holman. He was an organizer trying to organize the athletes to admit that we were taking under the table payments and to try and get the authorities to legalize these payments so we wouldn't have to be hypocrites. And you have to remember in those days, uh, the athletes lived by cashing in the airplane tickets that they would get from meat directors. And it was something everybody did, wasn't it? Everybody did it. And we got to do better than this. These guys are just talking too much. I need pictures. This is television, you know, tell a vision, you know what I mean? Let's see it. Because the great prize system we have today is made possible by the guys who tried to take a stand. Tim, Bob, this is the studio. I need you to get your helicopter in position to pick up this bandit runner. 40, 45 year old, dressed in black with the beard. Right down there may be the guy you're looking for here. Uh, dressed in black, right? Got a beard. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, making, a, he's making a move now. You can see he's starting to open up the distance between him and Vasquez. are reporting that Pullman is over the summit and heading for the rainforest. As we see Matt Singleton here still pumping hard and trying to get over the peak. Dorkin is behind him but closing. All your way back to the summit about eight minutes ago. He should be near you now. Hey, there he is. Here he comes. He's all in black. No number on him. That's his cat. Got by. Vince, you stupid shit. Let's do it, Harry. Master, go for it.
leader, 16-year-old Cindy Payne, with a full minute lead over Jenna Mervin and a two-minute lead over Daryl Beard, the man who won this race last year. This is a part of the race called Cardiac Hill. Go, Cindy! Oh, okay. 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 All right. Two shot. Get us me. Okay. Let me get the station ready. Okay. All right. They're ready there. Okay. We are here at the top of Cardiac Hill, and we are with Owen O'Reilly, who is the race director. Could this be described as the same situation? A couple of years ago, Boston Marathon, Jock Stemple and Kathy Switzer. No, I don't think it's the same at all. Uh, in this case, uh, we made our position clear right from the beginning. And this person has no business being in this if, race. If you made your position clear from the beginning, he's run half the race, he's in good position. Why wait till now to try and pull him out? Well, we've been discussing the matter, and we've just now come to a conclusion on it. Well, there it is. That's Owen Riley. He is the race director, and apparently here at the top of Cardiac Hill, they're going to try and yank Wes Pullman out of this race. If that happens, you'll see it. some unexpected developments out of the course. This is Nettles up at Mount Tam. Tommy, where the hell have you been? I need your camera. The camera's broken. Dave is still up on the hill. Willie, Willie, give me a shot. Willie, Bob, at the helicopter. Eddie, what can I do for you? Guy, he's got some kind of Western frontier martial mentality. He and his posse is going to try and get this guy out of the race. That's going to be a story. You're going to get an Emmy. I guarantee you. Stay close Mike, to it. this is Janine. Get those I'm shots. trying to make some sense out of this from what we can get from the spotters reports. Now, we have about five guys running in a pack. That Yorkland. Singleton, Coleman, Harrison, and Pendergast. And we hear that Ray Lopes is making a tremendous gain charging towards the front. And uh, this is the situation as they're heading for the cataract. 
two of us here. We hear the other runners are helping him. Well, how about the guys from Insult? Well, maybe they could uh, grow wings, fly down here and help us, huh? Hey, Bob, hold on. I think I hear them. I think they're coming. Let's get up there. there. Are you guys there? Here they come. Hey, here they come. Which one is What's he? Uh, on? He's the one in front, in the black suit, sandy hair and a beard. Did you get him or not? Come back. I don't know, Bob. They're moving. Come on, what's happening up there? participation this race, so are the spectators in Mount Tam, and they are liking what they are seeing. Hold on, like, so, uh, come on, Will. Come on. He's running through Muir Woods, but you can just see that he's robbing him running through Sherwood Forest. Yeah, with the sheriff of Nottingham right behind him. Come on, Very close behind him. Come on, Will. I've got to get something wider. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? Wider shots? Let's get some tight shots. Mr. Captain Bob, we don't need any wide shots. I need you to get tight. You know what I mean? Behind him, a pack of five. Five great runners. Singleton, Coleman, Bjorkland, Harrison, and Pendergast. We'll still be covering this race. We still have a helicopter in the air. We still have spotters in the mountains. see our technical problems clearing up at Mount Tam just as this race is taking on a new look, Marty. It is a different race entirely. Well, it's really shaping up. you got two ex-Olympians out there and a bunch of local mountain goats who are just going at it over this rough terrain. Uh, you know, there's Wes Holman, and he's having some problems. His long legs really need to stretch out. He's not built like a mountain goat. He's having trouble on the downhill. Well, they're starting to bunch up here in the moors, and probably his thighs are bunching up after going up those two hills. Yeah, you know, he's just not built for this kind of running. He needs to stretch out. And he's got a flat section coming up here. I'm sure he's been waiting for that. And, yeah, he's winding it up now. He's really trying to get that old Myler stride back. That's the West Holman I knew. Now listen to me. I've got to get you on that finish line. You get the finish line, we got to show you. If you don't do it, we're dead. This is Sheriff Sandvik down here. Listen, we've got 2,000 people and a race about to end. And there's no room to land. If you're not out of here in five seconds, you're getting the citation, okay? Sheriff, what the hell are you doing? I have a permit. I never saw a permit yet that would stop a copter blade. Land the goddamn helicopter. I'd like to see the guy finish. Cohen doesn't want him to. If you're gonna stop, you gotta stop him at the super -ed.
Winona Ryder's a confused teen convinced that the town's long-lost celebrity is her long-lost mother. Welcome home, Roxy Carmichael. Next.